Hello, and welcome to Chabot News for April 13th, 2023. My name is Claire Ikehide, and today we will be reporting on a mass shooting at a bank in Kentucky, a new viral threat warning from the CDC, and part two of our coverage of the Chabot College Art Show. We will also be checking in on the latest sports and entertainment news. All that and more coming up on Chabot News. A mass shooting at a bank in Louisville, Kentucky on Monday, April 10th has left at least five dead and several others injured, including a 26-year-old rookie officer who graduated from the police academy less than two weeks ago. Officer Nicholas Wilt was shot in the head while engaging with the shooter. He remains hospitalized and in critical condition. Ivan Rodriguez in Louisville with the latest. The interim chief of the Louisville Metro Police Department says the shooter purchased the gun legally April 4th. That's exactly a week ago. Uh, she says she can't get into the other details as far as what was recovered in the home. Right now, city officials say that the AR-15, a style weapon he used, he shot for a minute and then waited in the lobby for a minute and a half for police to arrive. A community in mourning. Our city is heartbroken heartbroken for the loss of friends and loved ones. Following another mass shooting in America. Audio from a Louisville Metro Police dispatcher shedding light on the terrifying moments Monday morning when a gunman opened fire during a staff meeting at Old National Bank. 25-year-old white male, Connor Sturgeon, 6'4". He's texted a friend, called a friend, left a voicemail. He's going to kill everyone at the bank, feeling suicidal. The horror unfolding live on the gunman's Instagram, which parent company Meta took down. Officials combing through that video say the shooting lasted for about a minute before Sturgeon was shot and killed by police. Investigators now searching for answers. There was a search warrant and that was taking place on yesterday at his home. And so we are hoping that items that were recovered that will reveal why this happened. As the city mourns a loss of five people, including 63-year-old Tommy Elliott, who some Kentucky lawmakers considered a friend. Tommy was a great man. Tommy touched a lot of lives. Tommy Elliott helped me build my law career. Helped me become governor. Gave me advice on being a good dad. Some members of the community are calling for action. Somebody's family doesn't have a loved one tonight. After yet another shock of gun violence. We must work together to end this plague of gun violence on our country. The mayor has also announced a citywide vigil Wednesday at 5 p.m. In Louisville, I'm Ivan Rodriguez. The incident marks the 146th mass shooting this year in the United States. Pe Pre President Biden signed a bill on Tuesday, April 11th, declaring the end to the COVID emergency here in America. But the CDC is warning of a new deadly threat. It's a rare but potentially deadly virus similar to Ebola, currently causing outbreaks in two African nations. And now the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has issued a health advisory for doctors in the U.S. to be on the lookout for the Maryburg virus. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has more on the illness and the concern that prompted the warning. In the U.S., there are no known cases of Marburg virus disease and the current risk is low, but the CDC is warning doctors to be on the lookout for anyone with symptoms. Marburg virus is in the same family as the Ebola virus and it can cause a very, very severe and fatal disease. Dr. Kristen England with Cleveland Clinic says the illness is not contagious until symptoms appear. These can include fever, headache, muscle and joint pain, fatigue, loss of appetite, gastrointestinal issues, and unexplained bleeding. Right now, Marburg virus outbreaks have only been identified in two African nations, Equatorial Guinea and Tanzania. The CDC says there's no evidence the two outbreaks are related. People can get on airplanes, people can travel. It's very easy to get from one part of the world to another today. In March, the CDC also warned travelers to the two countries to avoid contact with sick people and to monitor their health for three weeks after visiting. 
Marburg virus can spread through contact with an infected person's blood and other body fluids or through fluids from infected animals. It does not spread through the air like the coronavirus. We all need to be aware, not afraid, but certainly aware of what's out there. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Thanks, Mandy. If traveling can't be avoided to the areas in Africa where the outbreaks are known, the CDC says not to have contact with fruit bats and primates in those places. Both animals are known to be carriers of the virus. Air monitoring is underway at the site of a toxic recycling plant fire in Indiana. As of Wednesday, April 12th, at least 2,000 people have been evacuated in a half-mile radius of the blaze. Flames broke out Tuesday, and local fire officials expect it could burn for days. While potentially hazardous smoke lingers over nearby homes and businesses, authorities warn residents to bring in their pets, stay indoors, and don't touch any debris that falls in their yard. Laura Aguirre brings us the latest, and who city officials are blaming for the fire. This fire is going gonna, gonna to burn for a few days. Burning recycling materials like plastic causing a massive plume over Richmond, Indiana. A plume so large it was seen from space by this NOAA satellite. And it's one the state fire marshal calls definitely toxic. These are very fine particles and if they're breathed in can cause all kinds of respiratory problems. Burning of the eyes, uh, tightening of the chest, it could uh, aggravate asthma, it could cause bronchitis and all kinds of things. We've also activated our air monitoring uh, uh, assets as well to be sure that we understand what those air quality implications are. While the exact cause is under investigation, city leaders place the blame squarely on the recycling plant's owner. This business owner had previously been cited by our Unsafe Building Commission and given an order to clean up the property. That order was ignored. The mayor says they took that unsafe building order to court where it was upheld. And they say there's been several attempts to force the plant's owner to clean up the property. This person has been negligent and irresponsible and it's led to putting a lot of people in danger today. Those same people now waiting for word on if it's safe to breathe easy in their neighborhoods. We've been on site since the beginning and we're going to stay there until we can assure that this community uh, is not seeing any threats from the air quality implications here. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. Thanks, Laura. The Wayne County Health Department says N95 masks way filter out some of the airborne particles, but urge residents living near the plant to stay out of the half mile radius evacu evacuation zone and follow all the official instructions the richmond community school district also canceled all classes wednesday telling staff and faculty to follow the shelter in place order issued by the state now let's turn to some entertainment news with our other entertainment anchor diana thanks claire the role-playing game involving 20-sided dice in your imagination was the biggest movie in theaters on its opening weekend, bringing in more than $37 million domestically. Rick Damigella reports. We're thieves, but we help the wrong person steal the wrong thing and unleash the greatest evil the world has ever known. How many of your tabletop role-playing game sessions started out that way? Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez gather a party of adventurers to undo the evil in Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. The wonderful thing about Dungeons & Dragons not having known anything about it or role-playing games at all is that essentially what it is it's a game for actors. All you're doing is playing pretend like you would in an improv class. You're given a certain set of circumstances, obstacles, powers, backstory, and then someone says go and, you know, start playing. I don't mind that. Rodriguez went beyond play, performing roughly half of her own stunts. Anytime you see a guy being lifted over the head and swung across the room, that's my stunt double. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I learned all the choreography so I could match her. The movie is based on a small portion of the massive lore of the nearly 50-year-old role-playing game. We started with the characters, you know, it really had to be about um, relatable people that you would invest in and care about their journey. 
And then we built out. We were faced with these very unique Dungeons and Dragons y challenges uh, in how they're going to be able to pull off this heist in a way that is cinematically appealing, but also very true to the mechanics of the game. This one's dangerous. But whatever happens. Rolling for initiative in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Thanks, Rick. Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves has made nearly $90 million globally since its release on March 31st. Be sure to catch it at theater near you. The life of Michael J. Fox is a subject of a new documentary produced and directed by Davis Guggenheim, famous for his work on NYPD Blue ER and the acclaimed documentary An Inconvenient Truth, which was about climate change. Still, tells the impalpable tale of an undersized kid from Canada who rose to stardom in Hollywood in the 1980s only to be stricken with Parkinson's disease in 1991. For more on this and other stories, here's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. What did it mean to be still? I wouldn't know I was ever still. Here's your first look at Still, a Michael J. Fox movie, which goes inside the actor's unlikely life. A superstar on the big and small screens diagnosed with Parkinson's disease at age 29. The sad sack story is Michael J. Fox gets this debilitating disease and it crushes him. Yeah, that's boring. Still, a Michael J. Fox movie premieres May 12th on Apple TV+. Welcome to the National Championship! These white boys for Jesus! Who knew? So y'all really think God's gonna waste a miracle on y'all this year, huh? Child, I heard that clap back all the way over here. Let's get our praise on! The new movie Praise This drops Chloe Bailey and Angelica Washington into the world of Atlanta's competitive gospel youth choir praise teams. I'm just so grateful to be a part of a film that is filled with such light. And yes, it's great entertainment, but the message and the meaning behind it is truly special. Praise This debuts today on Peacock. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Thanks, David. Right, this was released on April 7th for streaming exclusively on Peacock. That's all for this week's entertainment news. I'm Diana Osaulenko. Now back to you, Claire. Thank you, Diana. Taking a local look, of, there is plenty of entertainment happening right here in the Bay Area. For instance, if you are a fan of the 70s rock group, The Eagles, then you are absolutely going to love this. The Eagles cover band One of These Nights will be performing for one night only this Friday, April 15th, 2023 at the Livermore Valley Performing Arts Center located in the Bankhead Theater, 2400 First Street in Livermore. Curtain is at 8 p.m. sharp. The performance is almost sold out, so you better hurry up. There is a show you won't want to miss. The Chabot College Art Gallery had an ex exhibition which ran from March 4th through March 31st. On March, 30, on March 21st, we sent our reporters Angelisa Dom Dominguez and Andrea Magdaleno out to cover the event. Last week, Angelisa featured some of the art and artists that contributed to the show. And now, in part two of their report, Andrea will tell us what information she gathered. The art department at Chabot College shared their creativity by showcasing a gallery in room 1002 from March 14th through the 31st. Inside the room, we are welcomed with paintings, sculptures, and photography pieces. We got an interview with the student whose art is featured at the reception hosted on March 21st. She goes into the meaning behind one of her paintings called The Circle of Life. This is the series of elephant. The name of the series is uh, Circle of Life. And from the top is, as you know, is the mother and the baby. That's the mother is protecting the baby. And uh, that's the beginning of life. And then the baby is growing and very playful and happy. 
and as you can see, the baby is you know, from pink and hot, hot red. It's, you know, it's a hot summer day, and then there's splashing water and very joyful. And the third piece is resemble of the baby is growing up. And this growing up, and this is on her own, or his own. The theme? Fantasy versus Natural Beauty came to life with a collection of pieces from everyone in the Art 45 class. The professor involved told us more about how the class encourages the artist. What I really love about helping students create the art show and to help them put their uh, art out there is that uh, it really gives students the opportunity to see what it's like to uh, promote their work. Uh, it gives them the opportunity to actually see their work in a finished state and be able to see their work as being professional and valuable. Um, I think sometimes when you're just an artist working by yourself in the studio, you get a little bit of tunnel vision and sometimes artists don't realize how beautiful their work is and to actually have it up on the wall so that others can see it uh, can be a really gratifying and encouraging um, experience so that's what we're hoping to get out of it and you know the work in this is open to all students it was an open call for art for not just students in the art 45 class but for any um, students at Chabot and a lot of times this is the, their first time having work in an exhibition so I feel like there's an aspect of that that is really encouraging and it helps students to um, create more work um, and be inspired by the other work that's in the show around them. If you didn't know about this show and are interested in showing support to our art students here at Chabot, there is another opportunity in the future. Actually, the art class will be putting on another um, show towards the end of the semester um, that will be the, the Art 45's individual portfolios along with um, the graphic design uh, portfolio class. They will also have work in the show and they'll be uh, kind of like a little end of semester celebration along with it. Date and time has not been said, but stay on the lookout at the end of the semester. This was Andrea Magdaleno reporting from Shabot TV. Thank you, Andrea. As was mentioned at the end of the semester, there will be another opportunity to show your support for the Shabot College Art Department. Date and times and are yet to be announced. Hayward residents may now dispose of their old batteries at Hayward Public Library. New, new batteries, new battery, recept, new battery receptacles located at Hayward Libraries are just one of several options customers have for safely disposing of their old batteries. Additional options include battery drop-off, receptacles at the main library located at 888 C Street and Weeks, 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 Weeks Libraries located at 27300 Patrick Avenue. Drop off at Hayward Household Hazardous Waste Facility. Place batteries in a clear plastic bag and place it on top of your tri recycling cart on collection day. Remember, all types of batteries are hazardous and should never go in the trash. Recycling or composing bins as they spark fires in collection trucks and leak toxic materials into the earth and groundwater if they wind up in a landfill. Now, it's time for some sports news and our sports anchor phone. Richie, what's going on? Thank you, Claire. A group of lucky fans at a restaurant in Baton Rouge, Louisiana had their fried chicken tenders served by the national champions. Several stars of the LSU women's basketball team, along with coach Kim Mulkey, took over a shift at the fast food restaurant Raising Cane's Wednesday, April 5th. They were joined by the restaurant's founder, Todd Graves. They operated through the drive through and registers for roughly an hour, hour while greeting fans. The Lady Tigers beat Iowa to win the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship Sunday, its first ever national title. They also had a victory parade for the team on Wednesday the 5th. American gymnast Sunny Lee is stepping away from the Auburn Tigers gymnastics team. 
That's according to a statement she posted on Twitter. Monday, April 3rd, Lee says she has been dealing with a kidney-related issue. She didn't name the exact condition, but did add that it's non-gymnastics related. The 20-year-old said she hasn't trained in the last few weeks because the medical team did not clear her to do so. She says she still hopes to compete for the United States at the 2024 Olympics in Paris. But for now, she says she is focusing on her health and recovery. Lee won the individual all-around gold medal at the Tokyo Olympics in 2021, a year after that she became the most decorated gymnast in Aub Auburn program history. She won eight All-American honors in the national championship on balance beam and was named the Southeastern Conference Freshman of the Year. And that's what's happening in This Week in Sports. I'm Richie B. And now back to you, Claire. Thank you, Richie. Buckle up. The car culture in America is evolving and new proposed rules from the EPA could move the country along faster. Strict new tailpipe standards, if approved, will see most new passenger cars go electric within the next decade. The Biden administrator, administration's aggressive moves present a show of force on battling the climate crisis. And they say will strengthen Thin jobs and the economy while reducing reliance on foreign oil. Gloria Pazimino has the details. And this is a very ambitious environmental policy by the Biden administration. It is going to require the entire car industry to reimagine itself. Right now, electric car sales only amount to about 6% of American car sales. And the goal here is to get up to 66% in less than a decade. These new pollution regulations are just the beginning of that. The Biden administration is betting big on electric. We're driving towards a clean energy future. On Wednesday, the Environmental Protection Agency proposed new car emission standards that could require electric vehicles to account for up to two-thirds of new cars sold in the U.S. by 2032. We're starting to see uh, all of the uh, auto industry move in this direction. Transportation is the biggest source of greenhouse pollution in the U.S., with light-duty vehicles accounting for 58 percent of those emissions. EPA Administrator Michael Reagan says the goal is not only to tackle the climate crisis, but to bolster the economy long term. This is a really exciting proposal that codifies the president's vision for an electric future that wins the day in manufacturing and jobs as well. The rules are intended to push the auto industry toward electrification and increase supply. We see that consumers are really responsive to uh, EVs when they get their hands on them. Still, not everyone is ready to buy in. 41% of Americans polled by Gallup last month said they would not buy an electric vehicle. But the White House hopes tax incentives, like a credit up to $7,500 for new EV purchases, will help drive Americans to electrify. We're going to save consumers money. This is a huge opportunity for everyone in this country. Now, critics like the American Petroleum Institute say the plan is flawed and goes too far, while some climate experts say the plan doesn't go far enough. Now, Dave Cook of the Union of Concerned Scientists said the group is hoping that the administration will also put some standards for heavy-duty vehicles and other forms of transportation, which the EPA is already considering. Reporting in New York City, Gloria Pasmino, back to you. Thank you, Gloria. If approved, the emission standards could start in model year 2027 vehicles. The agency also anticipates the new rule would mean EVs could also make up nearly half of all new medium duty vehicles like delivery trucks by models year 2023. Critics like the American Petroleum Institute say the plan is flawed and goes too far. While some climate experts say it doesn't go far enough, Dave Cook of the Union of Concerned Scientists said the group hopes the administration will go further on standards for heavy duty vehicles and other forms of transportation, which the EPA currently is considering. Some positive economic news, usually news U.S. annual inflation has fallen to lowest levels since May 2021. A new report 
out today. Wednesday found U.S. consumer prices are continuing to cool down, but one economist says prices for some reason, oh, prices for some sectors are not moving in a favorable direction. Patrick Cornell has more in today's Consumer Watch. A step forward in the ongoing battle over rising prices. A new Bureau of Labor Statistics report out Wednesday shows U.S. annual inflation is down to the lowest level since May 2021, but economists are cautiously optimistic. There's a lot of things that are hitting consumers that are still showing a very elevated level of inflation. It shows consumer prices rose in March by 5% year over year. That's down from 6% in February, and it marks the ninth straight month of slowing inflation. The rate of price increases has been cooling since it hit a four-decade high last summer. Economists say the real challenge for consumers is that the rate is still a long way away from the Federal Reserve's target, which could signal more action from the Fed may be ahead. That's why the debate around the Fed is about, well, how long time is it now going to take before we will get inflation all the way down to that 2% target. And the main issue is that core inflation, which strips out food and energy costs. Those numbers remain high. They're up 5.6% year over year. That means higher rents, housing, and other costs. If you look at cost of transportation, that went up. If you also look at airline ticket prices, also went up. If you look at the cost of housing, still very elevated. The latest report is adding to the debate around what the Fed will do at their next meeting, either pause interest rate hikes or increase them to further cool down the overheated economy. For Consumer Watch, I'm Patrick Cornell. Thank you, Patrick. The Federal Reserve meeting is scheduled for May 2nd. An elephant at Carawan Zoo likes to feel her bananas with her trunk. That's so unusual that she's become a subject of scientific study. CNN's Jean Moose reports on her AP peel. Real bananas don't peel themselves. People can do it. Orangutans can do it. But you try peeling a banana with a trunk which is why researchers went bananas over Pang Pa at the Berlin Zoo. And how does she do it? She snaps them? Yeah, yeah. so she, uh, first of all, she does it amazingly fast. Researchers like Professor Michael Brecht were so impressed they wrote a paper about her. This is an elephant with taste. Don't even try handing her an overripe brown banana. Within seconds, she tosses it away. And underripe bananas, she just swallows whole, which is how most elephants consume bananas. But when you give Pang Pa the perfect brown speckled banana, she uses a break and shake technique. That's not so easy to do. You know, it's not so easy to do. Not unless the banana is nice and ripe. Pang Pa breaks it, then picks up a piece and shakes it, detaching the fleshy inside from the skin. When the inside finally falls, she picks it up and eats it. When she peels a banana, does she eat the peel? No. But sometimes her daughter finishes the scraps. Maybe Pang Pa's upbringing influenced her. As a young elephant, she was hand-raised by a keeper. He always fed her with uh, peeled bananas. Pang Pa isn't alone. Mara at Brazil's Global Sanctuary not only is able to peel a banana, she hands the leftover peel back. When Pang Pa is eating with a group, she reverts to hoovering up bananas whole so other elephants don't beat her to them. Yet she tends to peel the very last one. I'm Chiquita Banana and I've come to say Pang Pa agrees with Chiquita When they're flecked with brown and have a golden hue Bananas taste the best and are the best for you Ginny Mouse, CNN C -C -C -C. New York Thanks, Janine. Just when you think you've seen it all. That's all for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff in the Mass Communications Department here at Chabot College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash TV. Stay tuned to KCTH Channel 27 for more Chabot TV.